Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Eleanor Malloy, and I'm actually based here in Dublin Business School, so I hope I do them proud. None of them are here, actually, to hear me. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> I started teaching in 2003. Actually, I started teaching in the school where Stephen was based, so it's nice to see you, Stephen. <laughs> um, and I started working here in 2007. Um, I teach in the English department uh, with Leo Darcy, um, as the head of studies, the DOS. And um, I also teach in the arts department, so I'm teaching students in the journalism and media uh, studies. So um, my main aim really with the students, and I'll talk about this with the intercambio, is um, speaking. I like to, to speak. Also I mentioned, which will come into the, the idea, is that I work on a radio station, Dublin City FM, if anybody listens into the radio station. Uh, or likes radio, um, and I do that show once weekly, it's a live show, and I had Peter on as one of my guests uh, on Friday morning. Um, so I do like to talk, and um, I try and encourage my students to, to do the same, and to be able to speak with fluency. I'm not going to ask you to stand up and do any dancing today, um, or do any singing also, some people like it. Um, I teach the older, the third level students, so I think if you've got them, ask them to get up and do a bit of a, a dance, they'll be looking at you going... You know, it's good though to get them to get up and move around. Um, so intercambio, what exactly is intercambio? It's intercultural exchange, not just on um, the language. Um, of course, we're, we're focusing on English, but not just the focus is on the language. I want to try and get them to talk. I want to try and get them engaged. I want to get them interested in a topic. And I like to kind of pull together ideas and drawing in and kind of what I'm doing on the radio as well. Anything that's newsworthy, anything that's in the news, anything that's in a bu like buzz that people are talking about, um, controversial, let's just say. I'd like to bring controversy. Not too much, obviously, I have to be quite sensitive depending on, the, on the, the students where they come from. But how I'm going to get them to talk, and that's my main aim. And I obviously have to have a lot of variety in, in the classroom. Um, they are third level. You need to try and challenge them a little bit um, and get them thinking. I don't want to do all the thinking. I bring the topic into the classroom and I get them to roll, to go with it. Um, how can I prepare them? Obviously, I, you have to focus on parts of the language. You have to prepare them with their vocabulary. So we do a lot of kind of brainstorming in the class um, before we, we, I suppose, launch into the whole uh, topic of what we're doing. So I'll bring the topic in right on the board. Um, on the board also just do the taking from the students, what would you associate with this topic? And they all kind of will start speaking or hopefully you know, get them to kind of speak. Some of them might raise some eyebrows going, what does it mean? So you may even have to explain exactly what the topic is you're going to be talking about, depending on the level of the students. Um, what are the kind of issues that you could possibly have within the classroom? Of course, many of us who have been teaching will always kind of have, find an issue um, and a problem. And some of the ideas of some of the issues that you do have would be um, the levels. Now, I normally would have mixed levels in my class. So how do you deal with that? Do you break them down within you know, elementary, beginners, intermediate? I don't have beginners, but the intermediate, upper intermediate, and so forth. I like to mix them up. And I find this helps the student learn more. Why? Because they kind of they help each other. I think that the idea that they can kind of push each other along, um, they can correct each other. And I actually openly encourage the students to correct each other. It's not just me standing over them, because they might get a little bit more you know, distant, a bit shy, if they see me constantly you know, correcting them, correcting them, correcting them, which I have to do some of it, of course. But I like them to, to, you know, to help each other along. And I do openly encourage it within the groups. And I divide the groups into smaller groups, into pairs, depending on the numbers. Um, but it does get them to kind of come out of their shell a little bit. You do get students also who are quite shy. That's going to be probably, and that can also be related to their nationality, as you may know if you've taught people from Brazil. Um, they're great students. I'm saying the students from other countries are not great, but they will openly talk. You can bring any topic into them and they will just go with it. It's, it's actually sometimes you have to even stop them talking, they, uh, as you probably are aware of the Brazilians. However, if you kind of come across cultures like Asian, they find it very difficult maybe to open it. And that is a cultural thing. And that is something where you have to kind of give them confidence. Tell them it's okay to make mistakes. Actively encourage mistakes if you can or if, if they want because they're one of the things they're afraid of making mistakes. They're afraid of... Um, I suppose making fools of themselves in some respect. They, that's what they think. But you have to try and get them to think it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to speak. It's okay to have an accent. It's okay that we, you know, we are going to you know, actively help each other. Um, 
And I think also in relation to the, the cultures, some of the topics I have to be quite careful on what I choose. Not too careful, because as I said before, I want to try and raise or kind of... I want to get their opinions. I want them to talk. I want them to debate. I want them to, you know, have issues with what I'm talking about. And uh, this, it, it does work. Um, as I mentioned also, the, the, the vocabulary, there will be a limitation. And as I said, the brainstorming does work a lot. And I do help them say something or give them alternative ways of saying. So they might use the same phrase again and again. I go, hold on. Why don't we, you know, say it a different way? We put the phrase or something more. We use textbooks or textbooks in classes a lot. I kind of say, and maybe Stephen kind of relate to this, like down with the textbook. We're very focused on textbooks and how we speak. Do we speak, you know, hello, how are you? I am fine, thank you. Okay, yeah, we do. But I mean, there is a lot of colloquial phrases that they don't learn through a textbook. And I like to kind of throw the phrase up, you know, give them idioms, give them metaphors, give them ideas about different ways we can use. Um, I'll give you an example. The other day in class, I was teaching the students how to say, you know, they were saying, oh, it's a problem. Oh, it's, I kept, they kept repeating the word problem. And I'd say, okay, another word we can use, issue. What about the word hassle? Have you ever heard the word hassle? And they're like, no. How can we use the word, right, the word hassle in, our, in context? We can say, you know, I said, the next time you have a class with one of the other uh, guys, Marek, who teaches them, I said, when Marek asks you to do something, you turn around to Marek and say, no hassles, Marek. And he, so they, I actually got a text off Marek there um, on Saturday. He said, no hassles, though? This is great. They're using this. When you learn it, and when, you, when I teach you the phrase, I want you to use it and throw it out there and use it in context. And I think it's great that they're learning this colloquial kind of phrases and you, they're brought into class. Going down to cultural sensitivity, yet yeah, there is... Obviously, I have to be quite respectful of their cultures, but I kind of draw on this kind of sensitivity thing. And I kind of think, okay, what will raise the bar? What will they be go? Really, you're going to talk about that? So I'm going to talk about some of the topics in a moment that we've, I've used. Um, but so as I said, the main thing is contribution. How do I get the students to contribute into class? Um, how do I build their confidence? It's, it's, it's all a personal thing. Each student is going to take their time. It'll take a while. They have to find their step. They have to find what motivates them. They have to find themselves to be able to speak. And once you can get there, by different means, you, you've done your job. And once at the end of it, they're, they're, they're using their English, that they, you're teaching them, um, they're actively talking, then you're, you're, you're there, you're nearly there. You just have to get them to try and talk. And as I mentioned also, peer correction. Um, I always, kind of, even if we're doing presentations in the class, I'll ask the students to have a notepad and pen and take notes on the other speakers and actually actively give them feedback about what the mistakes they've made, how they could improve. Um, it's not just me who's giving it. And they, they love that. They kind of think it's kind of competitive in some way. And, and it has worked um, in the past. Um, the group dynamic, as I said, depending on the numbers, the pair work, depending on the nationalities, depending on the levels. If I have mixed nationalities, I'm going to obviously mix them up as much as I can. If I have the Brazilians and some Chinese or the Korean, um, French, they like to talk. Um, they're, they're quite easy. Europeans, Germans have quite a good level of English generally. But I try and mix, as I said, the levels with the nationalities and all mixed up. Um, and it works quite well. Um, so what is open for discussion? What is topical? What is going to be of interest. Now, of course, you can't interest everybody. One person's going to be mad into soccer, another person's going to be into fashion, obviously depending. I've been quite sexist here, but the girls do like talking about shopping and things. But what is it that's going to overall try and get them to debate? I'm hoping that there's going to be an argument in the class. Obviously, we're going to have, you know, no punches or anything like this, but I don't want them to walk out of the class either, but I'm going to ask them to try, you know, well, do you agree with that? No, I don't agree with that. And you find that they would argue depending on their culture and where they're from. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the topics that I've used, um, and they've worked quite well also in the class. Um, so some topics of interest which I have used. Opening up, I have to learn about the students. I have to get to know the students. I have to find out what, you know, what gives them, what, what you know, drives them, what are, their, what are their interests. And I have a feeling, and this might give me some idea. Um, cultural stereotypes what you know they will talk they they present to me who they are where they're from what's culturally accepted in their country what they do on an everyday basis what their feelings are about you know even in ireland come to ireland do you find this culture very different to yours yes we do what do you find different you will see people from 
I have a lot of Kuwaiti students at the moment. They, the concept that we would, you know, openly, you know, go to pubs um, and that we, we drink beer, it's just like, okay, they're probably, they're aware that our culture is quite different to theirs, but in their country, you can't openly buy alcohol. And that's something that they get strange. They also find it strange for women to be drinking alcohol. And drunk women in Ireland? Never. No, no. So it's like... So, <laughs> Really? Just the one. Just the one, yeah. That's quite, yeah. It's quite unusual, I think, yeah. Um, so society, social segregation. The other day we did a topic on um, the Syrian, the civil war in Syria and asylum seekers and how, you know, that they maybe come into a country if they're accepted into the country. How, you know, opening borders, is it a good thing? Would they agree with this? You know, we were talking about in their country, the different cultures that are, are they very much, you know, settled in a community that's not part of their community and do they, or do they you know do they accept them as part of their own do they become you know part of their citizens can they get citizenship and they were telling me all about their different ways what do you think you know here we'd have the issue maybe with the roma gypsies and they didn't understand why we would not be accepting them it's just and it opened a whole area for discussion um and also i showed them a short documentary which was quite about maybe 10 minutes with like maybe bring at the beginning to show what they think of this um, from maybe some of you are aware of um, online Vice, maybe you might be Vice News or um, Vice.com. They do lots of uh, short documentaries, really, really good kind of cutting edge documentaries. So I found one on the, um, the asylum seekers trying to get come over in on the boats and these kind of, you know, the, the death boats and things like that. And people were shocked at the images they saw. But that was, that was good because they opened up the whole idea of asylum seekers and what we should do for them. Um, I'm just going to see I'm running out of time, and blah, blah, blah. Um, also, addictions, that maybe works, obviously, depending on the, on the cultures. I've done that. Uh, fads and crazes. I don't know if any of you are aware, we had an interview on the radio um, during the summer. Uh, this new fad was called Morning Gloryville. Uh, it's called, it's kind of a, an early morning breakfast rave. Um, some of you are probably aware, and it's kind of very hippie, kind of, you know, hipster I suppose. Um, and I showed them a short documentary on that, and I said, what do you think of that? Would you do that? Would you take part? Um, some of them were like, but there's no alcohol involved. I'm like, no. And they were like, really? I'm like, yeah. So I think some of them like, kind of liked the idea of it, you know. But it's kind of, you know, strange when I said, would you do something like this in your country? Go to a rave at like 7 o'clock before. And they thought, this is great, you know. So um, to talk about that. Marriage was a great topic because... Um, our kind of laws on marriage and divorce that kind of opened up ideas, but also Middle Eastern, their culture, some of the, the men are allowed to have seven wives and the women only one husband. And we opened up this, really? What do you think of that? You know, and then the other cultures were like, um, the Brazilians in the class were like, wow, that's great, isn't it for you guys? And blah, blah, blah. So that opened up a whole, you know, <laughs> interest. So I just kind of threw the topic at them. I let them roll with it. What do you think of this? What do you think of this? And it, it just, it, it was great. Um, the media, we talked about that. I, I kind of love it. anything that's in the news. I, I don't want to get them reading too much. It's all about the speaking. So it's more what's in the news. What, what are we talking about? Get them to even choose a news story and to get them to talk about the news story. So it kind of gets them up to speed, what's going on in our country, what's going on out there. So they're not kind of closed in to their whole culture because they kind of find that they all stick together. But you want them to kind of educate them in a way actively to get them reading, get them kind of looking at what they, they, you know, their interests are. Um, gun laws and crime and punishment, capital punishment. We believe in capital punishment. Um, and that kind of opened up but also something else for discussion. Okay, so my sources of information that I have used and I, I do use, maybe some of you maybe can give me some ideas what I can use in the future. Um, news reports, breaking news, the journal. The journal's great because it's got kind of short snippets of news. Um, I maybe bring the article, talk to them about the article. Um, if I do ask them, which is very rare, to do any reading, um, they would just, it'd be, they'd be quite short. they be edited versions of the articles I'll bring in. Um, as I mentioned before, this is an excellent, if any of you are trying to, you know, get some topics or some ideas for discussion, Vice News is excellent, I have to say. I've kind of just discovered this, um, and the documentaries online are, they're free, and you can just, they, 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 I think nearly every week or so, they, they produce new documentaries, they're quite good. Now um, funded by Rupert Murdoch, Sorry? Now funded by Rupert Murdoch. Really? That's quite interesting, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, have you, have you used it? Yeah, it's, it's good. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, the book, which I, and I, I've referred to this book as uh, the book that just keeps giving is Taboos and Issues, maybe some of you have used. And every time I pick up Taboos and Issues, I'm like, 
great. That's, they just always have a great topic, and they're always very topical, always great for discussion, always great, you know, taboo topics, taboo issues. Um, amazing. I'm sure a lot of you are quite aware if you've been teaching uh, taboos and issues. It's a great discussion book for the, the type of topics I'm doing. Um, so, and also then, as I said before, the radio, what I do on radio, I take them in to the classroom as well. Um, and I think this is great. This is like something, this is something we can use. This is something topical. And this kind of raises their awareness if they haven't been and gets them talking and gets them to culturally exchange, which is the whole idea of the intercambio. Thank you.